National Lacrosse Championship. It's the Statesmen of Hobart College against the Red Dragons of Cortland State University. Today's game is brought to you by... Light to any beer you like. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Cohn, along with Joe Harlan, and although the wind is gusting up to 40 miles an hour, it's not Candlestick Park in San Francisco, nor is it Chicago. We're in the Finger Lakes region of central New York, known for the wine-growing areas, known for the Grand Prix at Watkins Glen, and of course, known for lacrosse today, Joe. Hobart and Cortland, the Division III Championship. This ought to really be a barn burner today. A bloodbath is what people are calling this. Six to four was the score before when Hobart had to go to Cortland State, and that was Hobart on top. I I had an opportunity earlier to talk to Chuck Winters, the head coach of Cortland State, to find out if he was going to do anything different today. Chuck, the last time these two teams met, Hobart was the victor 6-4, to four, and it was on your home turf. What's going to be different about today's game, and what different tactics are you going to take? Well, Joe, we had four boys injured in that game, uh, didn't suit up, didn't play, and I feel that's going to have... Uh, uh, that's going to give us a big advantage today. It should be a little different from a, from a defensive standpoint. Offensively, we had one goal taken away from us. Would have made it a 4-3 game. I think that took a little, little momentum away from us. Uh, this afternoon, uh, I think you're going to find we're going to try to control the ball. They're a fast break type of team. We're hoping to slow it down and, and run the game at our pace. Good luck, Chuck Winters. Thank you very much. And Chuck Winters, now in his eighth season, completing his eighth season, has won 68 games and lost just 38. His opposite number today, Dave Urich, actually does double duty here at Hobart. He is the head football coach, and he's completing his first year as the head lacrosse coach. Let's meet Dave Urich now and go down to Joe Harlan. Dave, this has to be the most exciting day of your lacrosse career. Your first year as head coach at Hobart, and here you are in the NCAA three-division tournament, and you're taking on your alma mater, Cortland State, the same alma mater that just recently awarded you the Alumni of the Year Young Alumni Award. You blasted through your opposition on the way here. It was a tougher road for Cortland State. To whose advantage will that be? It could be somewhat to theirs, Joe, down in the finals. If it gets down to be a close game, they've been in some close ones uh, throughout the tournament. We haven't had a close one, but you don't get this far in a tournament without being a team that can perform under different situations. So it just should be an excellent ball game. It usually is when these two teams get together. Well, thank you, Coach, and good luck today. Thank you very much, Joe. And so now you've met the two head coaches, Chuck Winters of Cortland State, Dave Urick of Hobart. We'll return to meet the starting lineups in this NCAA Division III National Lacrosse Championship right after these words. Now here's the starting lineups. First for the visiting Cortland State Red Dragons. Number 32, midfielder John Kerner. Kerner has uh, 18 goals and 11 assists uh, on the year for the season for a total of 29 points. And he's joined in the midfield by number 23, Bob Lydon, the All-American out of Levittown, New York. Lydon, 6-6, six six, goals and assists for 12 points on the season. Now on the attack for uh, the Cortland State Red Dragons, number 14 is Bob Russo out of Brewster. Russo has 25 goals this year and 7 assists. Joining Russo on the attack for Cortland State is number 13, Terry Davis. Davis, 18 goals and 15 assists, part of this high-powered offense. And one of the many Levittown, New York players on the Cortland State team. Attack for Cortland State is Mark Ketzner out of Massapequa on Long Island. And he's high scorer with 28 goals, 29 assists, total. Uh, here's number 20, Kurt Stokes from Dix Hills, Long Island. Stokes with 8 goals and 4 assists for a 12-point total. And the man you met earlier, number 32, is John Kerner, once again in the midfield. And continuing along on the starting lineup for the Cortland State Red Dragons, the man in the nets, Jim Braun from South Huntington, New York. And he's a real stopper. If he's hot today, he's going to give Hobart a problem. Now the defensive alignment for the Cortland State Red Dragons. Number 41 is John Fitzgerald. And we're going to look for that defense to play more of a zone today than a man-on-man. -man. Fitzgerald from Port Washington, New York, also on Long Island. And joining him in the back line for the Cortland State Red Dragons, number 29, that's Bill Dunn. And Dunn is the second member of that uh, Cortland State stingy defense anchored by goalie Jim Brown. And the round out the Cortland State defense, the All-American number 22, John Distler. 
plays his man very, very well one-on-one. -on -one. Native of Larchmont, New York, in Westchester. That's the starting lineup for the Cortland State Red Dragons here at Boswell Field in Geneva, New York. Now let's meet the starting lineup for the homestanding Hobart Statesman. Number 31 is midfielder John Feinstein. Feinstein has 13 goals and only three assists uh, on the year for the Hobart Statesman. Also joining him in the midfield, number 21, a very clever player, Mark D'Arcangelo. Mark D'Arcangelo, the third highest scorer on the team, 23 goals, 14 assists. The bulk of the scoring from the attack, and here's the most valuable Hobart player, Roy McAdam. Roy McAdam, the number one player on the team, 42 goals, 20 assists, a total points of 62. And the crafty little attack man, Scott Petoza, out of West Genesee High School in Syracuse. Petoza, good for 16 goals and 15 assists. And the third member of that close attack for the Hobart Statesman is number 34, Jeff Naus. Naus, not much of a feeder with eight assists, but a great goal getter with 26. The big man in the nets for Hobart, and he's big, is number 19, Guy Van Arsdale. When you look to the goal, you don't see much space between him and the pipes. From right here in Geneva, New York. On the defense for Hobart, number 28, Pat Plunkett. Watch for all these defensemen that you hear upcoming to play really, really aggressive defense today. Joining him, one of Hobart's uh, leading rushers in football is Ed Cooney. There was a time when football players were strictly defensemen, but uh, now they play all positions. And the third member of the defense for Hobart is number 32, Steve Wood. And rounding out the starting lineup, not seen here, Larry Grimaldi in the midfield. Grimaldi, one of the top offensive players, the number two point getter on the team, 19 goals, 21 assists. We'll be back with more from Geneva right after this. <laughs> Division III National Lacrosse Championship here at Boswell Field on the campus of Hobart College in Geneva, New York. Teams getting a look at one another in the traditional line. And Dave, we couldn't ask for a nicer day for a lacrosse game. Up here, very torrid, very warm yesterday. Today, a heavy breeze blowing through here. Shouldn't affect the lacrosse game, except perhaps it'll give the players a little more stamina because it'll keep them a little bit cooler. As we watch, the, watch now the traditional face-off that starts every game, ball being placed between the two sticks, player to draw it out, one against the other, and now for the start of today's game, for the play-by-play, -play, Dave Cohen. That's Bill Sipperly on the left and Bob Lydon on the right. Jake Curran, the official in the middle. Gets them straighten away, and the first face-off of the NCAA Division III Championship has a push call against Bob Lydon of Portland State. And of course, because that's a loose ball push, it merely means loss of the ball. So it'll be the men in white that will start out on the offense to begin with. And the team in white is Hobart. Number 10 with the ball is midfielder Bill Sipperly. And here come the Hobart statesmen on the attack for the first time. They play 10 men aside, and this is Sipperly behind the net coming out and looking on the wing now for 21, Mark D'Arcangelo. Now out to the point, and the Hobart fans immediately going into a goodbye Portland champ. <laughs> Hobart losing the ball outside of the box and scrambling to regain control, Scott Petoza. All-American out of West Genesee High School in the Syracuse area. Good stick check, and the ball taken away by John Fitzgerald. And now here come the Cortland State Red Dragons on the break. And they want to slow it down to be a little bit more deliberate. Firing, shot, and scoring. They didn't live up to their previous billing. They came right in. We talked early on about the possibility of them slowing the ball down, but instead they took it right to the cooker, and we'll see it coming up here once again. Driving right down the middle, bounce pass, bounce feed off bounce goal off of this very hard dirt surface, difficult for the goalie to follow, and first blood is drawn in this game. That is Kurt Stokes coming up with a goal, and Coach Chuck Winter said he'd like his team not to get caught up in that fast break type of offense that Hobart is playing the play. On the second face-off of the afternoon, again a technical call, and again it goes against the Red Dragons. A holding call this time. And once again, Hobart will go on the offense, trailing one to nothing. First meeting this year was won by Hobart, six to four. The goalie is Jim Braun, number one for Cortland State there in red. Hobart with the ball. First shot, and they save 
Put the ball going beyond the inline, and it will remain in the possession of Hobart. Joe, you might explain briefly how possession is awarded on a shot. On a shot, it's the man that's closest to the ball at the point where it went out. Not necessarily closest to the back line, but the very specific point where the ball gets out. That's why you'll see those attackmen race to the back line. There's Scott Petoza, one-on-one. -on -one. Now he flips it into the middle, and the ball is controlled there by Hobart, and Petoza has it again. And Hobart looks to spread it out a little bit. Jeff Naus is 34. Teams playing at equal strength. And Petoza has it outside. Defense being used by Cortland State right now. A straight man-to-man -man defense. And Hobart again comes outside to set up the play. Right, nice stick check away. And the ball loose and finally controlled. Well, we'll have to wait to see who possession goes. It goes over to Cortland State. We're really seeing the reverse of what we had expected here today, and that is that Cortland State has been taking the ball right to the goal. Stokes opening up with the first goal for them at 14.05 remaining in the first quarter. And it's Hobart that seems to be slowing it down, moving it around, looking for the good shot. Only one shot taken so far by Hobart. Score is still Cortland 1, Hobart nothing as Cortland State has possession now. And a long pass into the offensive zone is taken away by the Hobart statesman. Hobart on the attack now. And again, the ball belongs to Scott Petoza. He likes to operate from behind the net, being checked there. And working free. Brad Gurla, number 10, is playing Scott Petoza. He's out on an isolation now, and he wants to look to face dodge and bring that stick across and see if he can get his way into the goal. Petosis fakes right, spins left, gets a bouncing shot off. Nice save by Braun, and Fitzgerald has it. He has it knocked out of his stick from behind by Naus. The attack man, Jeff Naus for Hobart. Now here is uh, Darcangelo getting checked and losing control of the ball. And here come the Cortland State Red Dragons. Nice spinning move, and the ball checked away and taken back by Cortland State. 32 is John Kerner, and we finally get a whistle. We've got a man down there on the field. We can't see his number right now, but he was a victim of some very severe checking. In lacrosse, you can body check as long as it's uh, right on the front of the individual. Let's take a look at it coming up once again here. Check occurring. There he is, slapped across the, the face with a stick, ball on the ground, and he looked, took a number 10, took a little shot with the back of the stick right in the face, and he's lying down on the ground still. That's, of course, number 10 for Cortland State, Brad Gurra, the freshman attackman from Mamaronek. He's still down on the ground right now. We're sure he'd be okay. It looks like what happened was the butt end of the stick, quite inadvertently, not a malicious check, as we watch him standing up now, quite inadvertently hit him and caught him under the chin, probably momentarily knocking him off his pins, and he's up and he's fine now. Now, if he isn't taken out of the game, Cortland will be required to take a timeout. That's the rule, so I would think that he'll be taken out of the game right now, rather than Cortland using one of the two timeouts lacrosse teams have for half, and that's exactly what's happening. Brad Gurla came in with uh, five goals and six assists on the season. One of the many uh, Long Island players in this game today. Two New York State teams and almost uh, exclusively all New York State talent on the field. Number six is Larry O'Leary, All-American midfielder for Portland State. O'Leary gets hit on the head. The late call coming up. O'Leary feeding. Here's the shot from it. Close to the floor by Terry Davis. That was really taking a beautiful advantage of a delayed penalty call. It's almost like getting a free shot. You know you're going to get the ball right back. A wrap around the neck, probably going to be called a hold. We'll discuss that a little bit further later on. A technical penalty is a race by a goal, and uh, if it is a personal foul, if it was called a check, it will be, in fact, uh, an extra man situation. Let's take a look at it coming up again. Rolling around, he's going to be checked and held right under the neck there, across the head and he's really being dragged down. Now that's strictly a referee's discretionary call as to whether that was in fact a hold or whether it was a slash. And it's been called a hold, so the goal will erase the penalty. Both teams at even strength right now. Cortland State on top, 2-0. And once again, uh, Hobart controls the faceoff. Now we've got a call before the play can get underway. It's an off 
Side call, I believe. That's right. And it's going to be a technical loose ball penalty, which means there will be no extra man situation. In lacrosse, if it is a personal foul, the team offending will lose a man for one minute. But if the ball's loose and on the ground, and it's just a technical call, such as offsides or holding, then the ball merely goes over to the team that was offended against. Now, here we have a re-face-off because both teams were offsides, and uh, the face-off will go over again. After every goal, there's a face-off. I believe what happened then is the uh, attack man jumped into the center area of the field where you cannot be until possession is maintained. And off the ensuing face-off, juggling the ball and finally controlling it is 23 Bob Lydon. Lydon, uh, an All-American in his own right. Now let's see if Cortland can get out of their own end of the field without too much trouble. They feed it in the middle to Larry O'Leary. O'Leary, off ahead for Davis. He scored moments ago. He's quick, and he sets up on the left side. Now let's see if the Cortland State Red Dragons play it deliberately or not. Six again, Larry O'Leary. He has it knocked away and taken down by Hobart. As you can hear, a very highly partisan Hobart crowd here cheering on their team. Hobart so far shut out in this game with a little over 10 minutes remaining in the first period. Nice move by uh, number four, defense, uh, Mark Ketchner, attack man, and knocking that ball away. And here's O'Leary controlling it. He almost lost the stick, but the ball stayed in it. Now up to Ketchner. Ketchner, 28 goals, 29 assists on the season. Ketzner fakes left and continues right. Now behind the net. Pointing out instructions with one hand as he slows it down and starts his move. 14 is Russo on the left of the screen. 13 Davis shooting into the middle. Curl is back in the game. He's number 10. Portland State's looking to drive from behind, and if the backup man comes to the midfield, they're going to feed it off. Right now, very good defense being played by Hobart on the man. Mark Ketzner still controlling the ball. Here's Gurla cutting through number 10. Davis is working in front of the net. Now Kirchner goes to the right side. Russo 14 is outside. Here's a shot, and uh, the partial save made by goalie Guy Van Arsdale, and it still remains in possession of Hope of uh, Portland. Once again, John Dissler racing to the back line, wanting to be the first man closest to the point where the ball goes out of bounds so that Cortland State will retain possession after the shot. Cortland State, as predicted now, David is starting to slow the ball a little bit, going to a deliberate one-on-one -on -one offense, uh, looking for the backing man to come. In other words, if a man slides off the midfield to help out, they're going to feed out in the midfield. Otherwise, it's going to be one-on-one -on -one to the goal. There's Terry Davis, 13, spinning, trying to get the angle for the shot. Down he goes. And he takes a heavy hit before the ball is regained by John Kerner. Kerner's pass outside is loose, rolling toward midfield. The battle is on for the ball now. And it's flipped ahead to Russo and taken down again by Kurt Stokes of uh, Portland State. He loses it. And can Hobart come up with the ball? They can. Hobart starting to get a little more aggressive. They came out on this field today, I think, David, with the thought that this ball game was theirs. Since 1972, they've won the Division II-III championship. Used to be a combined championship until this year. They've won that four times. They beat uh, Cortland State earlier on this year, and I think they came out a little lethargic. Now they're starting to show a little more of the drive that got them here. Ten times these two teams have played in NCAA tournament competition. Eight times Hobart has won, but Cortland won the biggie in 1975, winning the national championship 12-11. Now here is Hobart on the offensive. That's Scott Petosa. Shoots. Score. That was a beautiful goal. Petosa found his way around from behind the goal, came in left-handed, parked that ball in the upper right-hand corner of the goal as we face it, right over the Cortland State goalie. So finally, Hobart, the favorite team here with 8.27 remaining in the first quarter, draws its first blood, and it is down right now to Cortland State 2-1. to one. Let's take a look at that goal again. A beautiful drive from behind the goal, coming around left-handed, watching it from behind the goal, from the end zone shot, just like you're the goalie. Ball coming in, just a, a very small postage stamp of an area in the upper left-hand corner of that goal as you look at it from behind. And off the faceoff, it is taken back by Hobart, Bill Sipperly. The faceoff man winning and controlling and coming into the box now. Sipperly, number 10. There's a shot, a pass behind the net. Out in front shot, and he missed. 
Jeff Nelson missed wide to the left. Hobart again gets the rebound. Jim Run, the goalie, had something to say to the official right there, but he's back in his nets now and playing goalie. Credit Braun was saving that goal. A beautiful piece of goaltending in there. 21, Mark D'Arcangelo, midfielder for Hobart. Slows it down now as he comes to the right side. Nobody behind the net at this moment. Nice spinning move, D'Arcangelo. Can he get the shot off? Yes! D'Arcangelo is showing that fine form that runs in his family. His older brother, Jimmy D'Arcangelo, not only a first-team All-American at Towson State, but his older brother, also a member of the 1978 United States lacrosse team that played in England. Watch him. He'll do this all by himself. One man, now two. Now he's one-on-one -on -one with a goalie, and he puts it in the opposite side. And the goalie had number 41, a defenseman, in there to help him in the first of John Fitzgerald, and that wasn't enough. As Hobart knocks it up now, 7.44 remaining in this first quarter. David, it looks like we have a barn burner on our hands today. We're tied at two. A lot of time to play. Still in the first quarter. Only midway through the first quarter. On the faceoff, Leiden and Sipperly, and this time it is uh, Hobart trying to come up with it. It is Sipperly again. Quickly, he throws it upfield, but it is taken after the loose ball, taken back by Hobart. Here comes Petoza. Behind the net, he throws and losing it out of bounds right there is Roy McAdam, the most valuable player this year for Hobart. McAdam uh, taking his eye off the ball and losing it out of bounds. We're tied at 2, 7.27 to play, first quarter. ESPN bringing you the NCAA Division III Lacrosse Championship. Dave, like every other sport, momentum is very important in lacrosse. We saw Cortland open up with two quick goals doing something we didn't expect them to do, and that was to run and gun. Then when they went to the offense, the slow down offense, which we expected they would do, suddenly it gave Hobart new life and lost their momentum, and now it's a tie ball game. John Kerner having trouble against a big stick defenseman, but he gets it across finally. And the feed in the middle is taken down by Terry Davis. Got a lucky bounce. Davis throwing on the left side now and he's got Mark Ketzner. He sets up behind the net. Throws cross field and uh, Cortland will work it around again and become more deliberate in their offense. Ketzner behind the net. Ketzner out to Bob Lydon. Lydon to Kerner. Back to Ketzner. Can't make a move into the crease area. He goes behind the net. That is Davis. And back to Ketzner now. Good defense being employed here by Hobart. Lydon to Kerner. Starts his move now against the big stick. He fires and a save made and the rebound missed. And Davis may have stepped in the crease. And of course the defense, excuse me, the offensive player is not permitted in that crease with or without the ball. That circle around the goal as we take a look at the save coming up once again. You're not permitted in that circle. A beautiful one-handed shot and an excellent save as the ball pops up in the air. And we see on the replay right there, just as you called it, David, number 13 for Cortland State, Terry Davis in the goal. So the ball will be awarded to Cortland. The score is still knotted at two apiece. And the goalie, Guy Van Arsdale, comes out to help in the clear for Hobart. And they get it across the midfield line. And the Statesman now looking to go up in this game. Jeff Naus with the ball. Naus to the corner behind the net. It goes to Petoza. Taking his time. He flashes it out to the point to Naus. And Hobart will start it up once again. Spinning move by Naus. Bounce shot goes over the goal, out of bounds, and it will still belong to Hobart as they were closest to the ball when it went out of bounds. Good look at Jeff Naus there and goalie Jim Braun. That goal is six feet high and Braun can't be more than five feet three inches high. And that shot gets by him by Roy McAdam. A beautiful shot off of a cut by Roy McAdam coming in. And so now Hobart, who is down two zip, comes back with three rapid unanswered goals and goes up 3-2, 5.54 remaining in the first quarter. And Hobart showing the fine class that led it to an 11-2 record. Hobart lost only to Syracuse, who went so far as the semifinals of the NCAA Division I tournament and UMBC, who is the winner. And as there's a timeout called, let's take a look again at the goal. Feed from behind. Classic, classic shot out in the middle. That's what you like to see in lacrosse. Number 11 congratulating his feeder from behind because the assist is as important as the goal in a situation like that. A, call, a timeout here, David, called by Cortland State. I'm sure our winners wants to calm his team down. They had a 2-0 lead. They gave it away very quickly, and I'm sure he wants to stop the momentum right now of Hobart. Three goals in the last three minutes by the Hobart Statesman, who fell behind 2-0, and now have rallied to take back the lead at 3-2. Uh,
as we started to say before, Hobart, 11 wins, two losses, and we can't emphasize enough that the two losses that they had were to Division I and Division II teams. Syracuse, who lost narrowly, or not narrowly, who lost finally in the Division I semifinal playoffs to defending champion Johns Hopkins, and the only other loss of Hobart coming against UMBC, who has earlier gone on to win the Division II crown. Portland State at 9-4 and four has an impressive record also. They did not lose the Division III game all year with the exception of their loss to Hobart, and they lost only to Cornell, Adelphi, and Syracuse. Again, Division I and II teams. I think it's safe to say that we talk about Division I, II, and III in lacrosse, but more so than any other NCAA team sport, the teams can play very, very close in terms of competition. There isn't any doubt that a number of the Division II and III teams at least a few may well have made the Division I tournament if they had elected to be Division I schools this year. This is Hobart controlling. They have the momentum and they have the ball. Number 14 in control is Ed Cooney, a fullback on the football team. And uh, he loses and finally Cortland State comes away with it. But they're clearing passes loose at midfield. And uh, the ball is still loose and Petosa tries to hack it ahead. And finally it's tracked down by Cooney. The defenseman with a big stick, he loses. Mark Ketzner sticking it away, puts his head down. Here's Davis picking up the loose ball. Davis goes outside now to Jerry DeMeo in the game. Here's a long pass or shot that goes out of bounds. There was a very specific reason for that shot as we watch number 26 will be coming off the field soon. And that is because after a faceoff, you cannot substitute a man. What happened is number 26 is a defenseman with a long stick who went in there for Hobart, excuse me, for Cortland State to help out on the clear, excuse me, on the faceoff. And they had to get him out of the game because they don't want a defenseman with a long stick in there. The only way they could do it was with a, a timeout, and they did that by throwing the ball over the goal. There's Ketzner one on one behind the back. Nice save made by Van Arsdale, and Hobart comes up with a loose ball. Pretty move by Ketzner. Hobart leading at 3-2. to two. We've got under five minutes to play first quarter. The NCAA Division III National Championship. The Hobart Statesman on their home field. 32 is Steve Wood. Long pass upfield. And a check from behind by Ketzner. Now the ball taken back, however, by Tim Hoppy. Hoppy. Gets the ball into the stick of midfielder Bill Sipperly. Now we have a whistle on the near sideline. We're waiting right now. It may well be a bench call that we count the number of men on the field. There is not an offsides. And apparently there's a technical call out here, but we did not see what it was. It's an all-even situation right now. And as we count the players down on the field, we note that it's an all-even situation, unless that was a bench timeout that was called. At any rate, it will have no effect on the game right now as Hobart is on the move. Hobart with their second midfield in the game now. A pass intended for Feinstein gets away, but it's tracked down, and uh, Hobart retains possession. They set it up out at the point now. Hobart leading 3-2. to two. Four minutes to play, first quarter. And here come the Statesmen again on the attack. And uh, that's going to be called as a hold. The subsequent hit was a perfectly legitimate hit from the front, but that's going to be a call to hold. It is a possession technical, which means we're going to see the first extra man play of this game. Hobart leading 3-2 to two as we watch it coming up again. Man is going to hook his stick over there. It's all right to check the stick, but you just can't hold on to him forever and ever. That hit that you saw right afterward is perfectly legitimate. So now Hobart will have the ball for 30 seconds with an extra man, very similar to a power play in ice hockey, for instance. We'll see Hobart try and move the ball around, try and get the five defensemen with those long sticks in there for Cortland State moving around and find the open man. Bob Russo guilty of the uh, infraction and the victim on that particular play was John Feinstein. And we're hearing some screaming down on the bench which is being picked up by our field mic and there is a flag being thrown. In the meantime Hobart goes on the attack and the ball knocked out of bounds. And now let's see if they get it straightened out. The now, call being made by the Cortland State coach was illegal substitution, and the player ran into the game right behind the official. What happened there, and the reason the flag was thrown, is whenever there is a call from the bench or a question that some uh, one of the coaches makes about uh, a certain substitution, the bench official honks his horn, and the flag is thrown in midair so that players not stop in the event that the call is not legitimate. Apparently, uh, it's going to be here because I think uh, we'll have 
have to watch, watch to see who's going to be awarded the ball. And if it's awarded to Cortland State, as it's going to be, we have to assume that the, the call was, in fact, illegal substitution. And so Cortland State complains, and they come away with the ball. And Mark Ketzner uh, eludes two men as he throws way upfield, but it's intercepted by the defenseman Steve Wood. And Wood trying to regain control as he comes across the midfield line, falls out of bounds, but the ball remains in play. And uh, play ragged at this point as we get a whistle. And Jake Curran down on the field is going to call a one-minute slash. By the way, what Cortland State was trying to do was to get that ball down at their end of the field, getting in, get it in that box. If they did that, they would be awarded their play back on the field. In the meantime, they lost the ball down on the Hobart end of the field. They were guilty of a one-minute slashing call, so Hobart, who is ineffectual on his first 30-second extra man play, will now have another opportunity for one minute. Hobart leading at 3-2, to two, just over three minutes to play first quarter. All the scoring has been in the even man situation so far. Now Cortland trying to play down a man and uh, prevent themselves from falling farther behind. Losing the ball out of the box and here's Hobart trying to remain regain control but uh, Portland State being very tough defensively on the man down situation. Now, if that ball's, well the ball's going to be awarded to Hobart it was off of the stick of a Cortland State player, number 26, I believe, Jerry DeMio. And so Hobart will continue to have the ball an extra man for the balance of the 60 seconds remaining. And Mark D'Arcangelo controls as he moves it up the sideline. This is an extra man play for the Hobart Statesman. They lead it 3-2. to two. They work it around behind the net. And back out in front for the shot and the partial save made nicely by Jim Braun. It still will be Hobart ball. We want to look for that ball to eventually come to, to Dark Angelo. Out on the point, another shot from the identical spot goes out of bounds again and Hobart will try once more. Very quickly the ball comes in play and here's a pass missed by Dark Angelo. He looked like he could smell the goal at that spot on the field. He had one earlier, and now coming away with a steal is Cortland State. They throw it up, trying to get it into the box downfield, and Guy Van Arsdale comes way out of the net to play it. Upfield now, the ball goes to number 14, Ed Cooney. Hobart comes into the box, a long pass to Dark Angelo. And the team's now again at equal strength. Portland State successfully killing off the one-minute slashing penalty. That's a big turning point. One and a half minutes of extra man play, and Hobart couldn't capitalize. Body checked by O'Leary against Feinstein. Hobart retaining control. Here's a man moving in position for the shot, and the save by Braun, and paying dearly on that shot was Larry Grimaldi. Now McAdam in control. McAdam, very quick. Feeds left side shot. Feinstein, save. And the ball rebounds out across the far sideline. Dave, I think the goalie might have gotten a little assist from the goalie's best friend in there, and that was the pipe. The way that ball came out, we have to believe that it caught a little bit of that pipe. And now we see substitutions on the field. A lot of teams this year have been using six defensemen when they're on defense, even in an even situation. And that's precisely what we had uh, Cortland State doing there. Let's take a look at that save once again and see if my prediction was correct, see if the pipe did in fact help him a little bit. Hard to tell, but it really did go right off of there. Back live we are, a minute 18 to play. First quarter, it's Hobart and White three, Cortland State two. This game coming to you from Geneva, New York on ESPN, the NCAA Division III National Championship. Cortland State losing again. They go back into the crease to Van Arsdale. His pass is uh, knocked away at midfield by Davis, but finally it's taken back by the defenseman who overthrows Petoza and running it down is goalie Jim Braun. He'll let it go out of bounds wisely. Since it was off of the stick of a Hobart man, just under a minute to play here, Cortland State, as you pointed out very wisely, will put the ball in play, and I think they'll take their time clearing it up. They'll burn that minute off the clock if they think there's going to be a problem getting it upfield. They don't want to be caught now. They're down 3-2. to two. They're still well in this ball game, still in the first quarter. Scott Petoza out of West Genesee High School in the Syracuse area, one of the prime feeders for many, many colleges in terms of lacrosse talent. Ball being lost by Cortland State deep in their own end. That's exactly what they didn't want to have happen. 
And now we'll see those defensemen who are playing a riding position for Hobart coming off the field. As the clock winds down under a half minute, they're going to see if they can extend their lead to 4-2. to two. 15 is Matoza. Looks to the bench for a sign, and now he starts the play. The coaches are yelling at the team. Apparently, they don't realize there's only 10 seconds to go. Now, the shot by Matoza, and he scores. That was an incredible shot. An unbelievable, unscreened shot. Matoza came in left-handed, wound up, just challenged the goalie, and blew it right by him. Nothing fancy at all about that. It was me against you, and that goalie, Jim Braun, was frozen in his tracks. Let's see it coming up again. Here's Feinstein with a pass to Petosa. Now watch. Me against you. No screen at all. And he just parked it inside, right on the left side of his belt, which is the most difficult place for a goalie to save because it's opposite his sixth side. Only four seconds remaining. David, I don't think we'll see much more than the faceoff now as Hobart has gone up 4-2 to two before the end of this quarter. It's Bob Leinen and Bill Sipperly, and Sipperly wins it again, and there's the horn, the end of the first quarter of play. So after 15 minutes of the NCAA Division III National Championship, it is Hobart 4 and Cortland 2. Going along with Joe Herland here in Geneva, New York. Joe, the first quarter stats. I'll tell you, Hobart has really dominated the faceoffs. Out of the seven faceoffs in this quarter, Hobart gets me back in the action. Shooting court. Two bulge. Saves. Cortland has four. Hobart two. And both teams have been unable to score on extra man. I team that's had an opportunity on extra man they're 0 for 2 and that was a very tough goal that ended the first quarter for Cortland State because they had been a man down for a minute and a half against Hobart had thwarted them twice and then just when they seemingly had the ball and could clear it out and come away with only a one uh, goal deficit Petroza came in there and just cranked one in and put Hobart on top 4 to 2. David? Second quarter faceoff now the team switch sides and new faceoff man on uh, this play it's Kurt Stokes but Hobart Hobart wins the faceoff again. That's now 7-1 to one in faceoff advantages. Ball goes out of bounds, and possession will belong to Cortland State. And you see on the sidelines the uh, Cortland State coaches signaling with their arms uh, in an upright fashion. They're saying that the Hobart team is warding off or pushing off, and you can't push the man away with your stick, uh, with your off hand off of the stick. Here's All-American Larry O'Leary slipping but maintaining control. Nice uh, balance by O'Leary. O'Leary. Comes to the goal line. Now he spins away from his man. And he moves in on the net. His pass is not picked up by the intended man. Ed Cooney instead has now for Hobart. Fleet-footed defenseman. He's a fullback on the football team. And Cooney comes the other way now. Cooney leaves for Mark D'Arcangelo. He's got one goal in the game already. He's into the box with a feed down low and a shot and a save by Braun. The rebound taken by Grimaldi. And he leaves now for McAdam. Number 11, Roy McAdam. Look at that repeated stick check. And finally the ball knocked away but taken back by McAdam. McAdam, good speed. Played by O'Leary. Goes behind the net to Petosa. Grimaldi is number 12. Instead it goes out to the point to D'Arcangelo who shoots and misses. But the ball will stay in the hands of Hobart. You don't have to beg Darkie to shoot. He'll let that ball go and he has a license to shoot from outside. He's equally strong left and right handed but you'll see him go to his left a lot which he really likes a lot more. A lot more power in his left hand. Petosa. And they go back outside now. And this is Grimaldi. And now again it is McAdam behind the net. Switching hands on the stick is just about every player can do nowadays. The feet in front, the shot and a save nicely by Braun. And uh, Cortland tries to clear it out in a hurry. Hey, Braun has had some game here. He's really kept him in in the early going. Ball still alive on the sideline. Body's going down left and right. And finally we get a whistle that stops play. It's going to be a one-minute 
Gripping penalty, it looks like. From behind, it's a pushing penalty. A pushing penalty from behind on number 34. That's Jeff Nouse who goes to the penalty box. And we'll see now if Portland State can take advantage of the man-up situation. First opportunity for Portland State. Hobart, as we pointed out, 0 for 2 in a minute and a half. A personal and, an, and a technical foul. Unable to score. Portland State needs a goal right now. Portland State got their first two goals early in the game and they get their third right here. Immediately taking advantage is number 14, Bob Russo. A very basic play, taking the ball off to the right side, feeding the middle as Russo's cutting it in. A beautiful bounce shot, the kind of shot every coach likes to see his players take. One that gets down on the ground, particularly on this very hard surface where there's no grass in front of the crease. Let's watch it coming up again. A nice feed coming right across. Man cutting in right-handed. He's going to bounce it down on the ground and right past the Hobart goalie. And so Cortland State is right back in this ball game, trailing 3-4. to four. Really no defensive help. He had a nice shot right down the slot. Here comes Hobart. And a nice steal by the big stick defenseman. And coming away now is Mark Ketzner with the ball. Ketzner number four. Gets a push and saves the ball inbounds. And it is loose in front of the net. And out having to track it down is Van Arsdale. Four to three. Hobart leading Cortland. Second quarter with 12 minutes, 35 seconds to play. Van Arsdale throws it way up to Steve Wood, who's 32. Well, Davis comes over to bother him, and they get it into the box. McAdam behind the net to Batoza. Back to McAdam. Deflected away nicely by number 22, John Gissner, an American defenseman. Now Naus out of the penalty box has the bouncing ball. Naus takes a body check, loses it. The ball loose. Patoza, does he have it? And it goes by the crease and closest to it as it goes out of bounds is Jeff Now. Because a crease attackman or any offensive player out there can use that stick just like a golf club. They can take a four iron and put it right in the goal by swinging that ball, and swinging that stick, hitting that ball on the ground. That's exactly what we saw. And the goalie has to be very alert for what they call garbage goals. And those garbage goals count one apiece as Hobart now has the ball in play after being up by two goals, now up by only one. Cortland State renewed momentum after that last goal. And the pass thrown over the head of Mark D'Arcangelo and out of bounds. Gee, I wish the uh, the cup was as big as the net when I go golfing. <laughs> it's a gorgeous afternoon here in Geneva, New York. Temperatures in the mid-70s, little humidity. It is breezy, so it's comfortable just about no matter what you're wearing. This is beautiful uh, country up here, David. Flying in here this morning, looking over the Finger Lakes. This is just a beautiful part of America. One of the wonders of the world, the Finger Lakes region. Number six is Larry O'Leary, one of the wonders for Cortland State. Now the Red Dragons set up behind the net. They're down by a score of four to three, looking for the equalizer. Fourteen is Russo. And 13, Terry Davis. Getzner is number four. Hard shot, a bounce shot, deflected, and rolling out of bounds, and it will still belong to Hobart. Unlike these synthetic surf surfaces, uh, surfaces, excuse me, where the ball takes a very true bounce, on this dirt surface, it can go anywhere. So that's very very important for these players to keep that ball on the ground when shooting from outside there's Ketzner he has it knocked away from him by behind by Steve Wood Ketzner still battles for it and uh, it goes onto the stick of Hobart's Pat Plunkett the defenseman now flips on the other side of the field where it's taken down by 41 John Cypher John Cypher by the way is from Portland New York a lot of good goaltending on both sides the only reason the score is four to three I think uh, if we'd had some lesser goalies in here today David we probably would have seen three or four more tallies on both sides a good defensive game with some great offensive moves Hobart hasn't scored now in quite a while Hobart still leading however by a score of four to three 21 Mark D'Arcangelo number 10 is Bill Sipperly and that is here with the ball now Sipperly flings it down to the left corner area where it's played by Grimaldi behind the net to Potosa. Now Roy McAdam 
Back behind the net, D'Artangelo having trouble controlling, and he just saves it in near the end line. A beautiful tightrope walk across that end line. D'Artangelo is showing why he's the fine player he is. A great one-on-one -on -one man. Got to get a little bit wider. There's Sipperly. There are two Sipperlys on the Hobart teams, brothers uh, Bob and Bill. Behind the net, Petosa, 15. Get one right here. Out he goes to the point. D'Arcangelo's shot is a save by Braun. Nicely. He dumps it out quickly as one of the few times today. Cortland comes up looking to break, but now they slow it down somewhat. Number four, Mark Ketchner across the restraining line into the box. Ketchner in heavy traffic. Ducks that stick check. Feed in the slot. Save and Arsdale. That was some save, a beautiful quick stick. I don't know how he did it. He couldn't have had more than a fraction of a second in that goal to make the determination to make the save, and the Hobart fans respond. The portly goalie for Hobart, Guy Van Arsdale, Pat Plunkett, he's it into the attacking half of the field, and here come the Hobart statesmen. The quick feet of Scott Petosa, McAdam. Now to D'Arcangelo, back to McAdam, setting up in front is Grimaldi, number 12, look at him on the crease. Back it goes now, Grimaldi releasing going behind the crease. Run it again, run it again! And one more time, Grimaldi, Petosa is in front, number 15, so is 34 Nows. Put it in, boy! There's a feed in front. Intended for now, and it goes over a stick all the way out to midfield, where a man falls across the midfield line. Cortland looking for the offside call, and Cortland coming up with the ball. Bob Russo, 14. Cortland playing a zone defense there, David, and really confusing, uh, confusing the Hobart statesman. They threw the ball away, and now Cortland, only trailing by a goal, is going to have an opportunity to even it up. That's Liner, and his shot is taken by Van Arsdale. Man may have stepped in the crease, did he? Yes. It's going to be an illegal procedure call because the goalie had the ball in his stick and he was checked. So that's going to mean a clear all the way down to the other end of the field. And let's see if they tack on a penalty on top of it because it was, in fact, possession. An illegal procedure call. And it, the ball will be awarded over to Hobart. And they'll get a free clear out of it. All even, though. Except for the score, which remains 4-3 to three in favor of Hobart. Capacity crowd here at Boswell Field in Geneva. Once again, the Statesmen on the attack. They lead it 4-3. to three, And that's Roy McAdam, number 11. Petosa is number 15. Back out to the point it goes. Naus is out there now. He's 34. And the ball is taken down by John Fitzgerald. Gets a check from Naus. Still controls Naus on his head. And the ball thrown out of bounds. No flag on the play. There's good defensive work there by Jeff Naus. Into the far corner and now behind the net. And out to the point it goes. Aaron pass taken down by Cortland. They try to get out of the defensive zone, but Naus comes back to control again for Hobart. It's going to be a delayed penalty. It's going to be an offsides penalty. The attackman very alertly, once he's offsides, he's going to get into the flow of this anyway. Fitzgerald all over Petosa. Petosa maintaining control. They feed it in the slot. Shot. No good. And uh, now we'll get the call being made. And what happened there is number 14, Bob Russo, attempted to check the midfielder, slipped offsides. He saw the flag go down, which was a delayed call, enabling Hobart to uh, be on the offensive. Since he was already going to be called for offsides, he said, the heck with it. I might as well go in there and play defense. He went over because he can only be called once for it, and he played in there and really was instrumental in help breaking it up a little bit as a nice save was made. But it'll be a 30-second extra man for Hobart. Put it in, man! Put it in! Statesman got their last goal in the final seconds of period number one. They've been blank now for about eight minutes here in period number two. Number 11, Roy McAdam, he winds and fires and hits the crossbar and rebounds, as you see, over the running track and uh, out of bounds. Those fans have to be very alert back there. That ball sometimes travels at speeds in excess of 90 and 95 miles an hour. Once again, it's Hobart 
Once again, McAdams sets up left. The feed out to the point. It's too far, and it goes back out to midfield where the log sticks battle for it, and it's still in the Hobart half of the field, but coming away with it now is number 10, Bill Sipperly. Sipperly to D'Arcangelo. The team's back at equal strength. And a whistle. And that's going to be a whistle. Hobart's going to call a whistle, and uh, excuse me, call a timeout. And I think uh, their coach is going to be, Dave York, a little bit upset. They have been unable to score on extra man, given several opportunities. In that case, what they were trying to do is get the ball out front, and they overthrew it. Hobart, uh, just to recap for you, letting Cortland grab a two-zip lead on them. Then they came back with three quick goals, uh, excuse me, four quick goals, making it four to two. A beautiful goal by Petrosa to end the first quarter, where he banged it by the goalie, and then only one goal so far this quarter. And that will take you down into the Hobart huddle. You're knocking those passes out. It's just like extra man offense. See Darky that time make an effort to change the stick around and throw it to the outside. That's what everybody's got to do. Everybody just let him make his extra man offense. You can't, and you got to come to meet the pass too, okay? You can't be standing still. Listen to me. If you run what we got, you're either going to have the curl guy or the backside is going to be open. But you got to be able to execute it under pressure. If you're going to pop one guy out of that zone, he's going to run with you. But I'll tell you, Roy's dragging that guy out, going backside, and the back door is open, okay? And we'll get the outside shot as well. Just make sure it's ball screen. You understand? It's our ball, right? Let's go attack. Okay, what Coach Dave York is talking about when he talks about the backside, he's talking about the open man when they move the ball around on the opposite side from where the feed is coming. He wants to have the goalie's attention on one side and feed the ball across to the other side. He said that zone will come open if they drag out on you, switch hands like Darkie did, and throw the ball out front. In other words, don't get stuck in a pattern. Also, he said he wants a screen. That means he wants a man on the crease standing in front of the shot that can move to uh, keep the goalie from seeing it as this ball is being taken around. Let's see how Hobart executes its coach's instructions. 4-3, to three, the extra man play for Hobart. And good defensive work being uh, put on right now by Cortland State. Hobart has not scored since the closing seconds of period number one. And there's a nice deflection on the pass and Cortland State coming away with the ball. 26 for Cortland State is uh, Jerry DeMeo. And a long feed goes down the field and out of bounds. Or does it? No, it stays in bounds. And again, here comes uh, Hobart on the attack. Bill Sipperly having trouble, and he has it knocked away. It goes onto the stick of uh, Russo. His feed intended for Ketzner goes out of bounds. Ketzner had a sure goal if he had handled the ball. But he made the same mistake that an end makes in football, and that's that he took his eyes off it before he caught it. Let's take a look at it again. Ball coming down on the right side. They'll be looking to throw it across. A man standing there naked on the crease. All he had to do was catch that ball. A three-year-old child could have put it in the goal. But instead, he tried to let it go and tried to pull the trigger before the gun was loaded. Run out and get me a three-year-old. <laughs> it's still four to three with uh, Hobart leading Cortland State. Goalie Guy Van Arsdale flipping it over to Steve Wood, 32. And he throws it crossfield to uh, Mark D'Arcangelo. Into the box come the Hobart Statesman. Jim Braun, the goalie for Cortland State. Slipping and falling and losing control right there was number 15, Matoza. And the indication is that his foot was out of bounds when he handled the ball, which means that Hobart will now take possession of the ball. David, how many times have we seen in sports two top teams meeting in a championship, two teams that have the ability in any sport, football, basketball, whatever, to score a lot, and when they meet each other, they seem to have a tremendous defensive effect on each other, just like we have here today. Loose ball of the midfield area, and somebody jumped over offside. And it's going to go in the favor of Cortland State, so the out-of-bounds favor is returned with an offside. Wins by Hobart. Cortland State trailing by a goal, 431 remaining in the half. will have an opportunity once again, as they've had numerous times, to tie it up. Number 16, uh, attackman Don Malloy playing for Hobart. This is Cortland State and number six, Larry O'Leary. 
Outside they go to Mark Ketzner. Starts his drive. He's into the box. Ketzner shielding the ball nicely. Ketzner flipping. Intended for Davis. And it's taken in by Van Arsdale. And they slough off the goalie. Now Ketzner's going to come try to bother him a little bit. But Van Arsdale dumps back for his defenseman. That's Ed Cooney. And it's Van Arsdale one more time. Three minutes, 55 seconds to play. First half, it is Hobart four and Cortland three. Get open, Van Arsdale walking it slowly out of the box. And flipping to Cooney. And back to Van Arsdale. And now finally upfield. And here come the statesmen. Jeff Nels. Down low. Over on the side of Batoza. Back outside and deflected nicely and broken up by Cortland State. The battle at midfield. Cooney trying to swipe it ahead. And again, it's Hobart controlling. Jeff Nows, number 34, walking it toward the box. Now to Tim Hoppy in the game. Shoot Hop! Shoot it, Hop! Heavy traffic for Hobart, and they can't get the shot away. Fitzgerald has it knocked out of his stick from behind. Fitzgerald battling for the ball. And finally, it is taken by Hobart. Feinstein, 31, but he loses it. Ragged play at midfield as Cooney loses it there. And who? The feed into the box and then out of the box. And here they come again. John Kerner, the attack man, to Ketzner. The shot to score! A tie ball game! And the 4,000 plus fans here go berserk. And David, early on, it looked to us like uh, Hobart had the Cortland State fans outnumbered. But that's not the case as they filtered in now from a couple miles away. And right now it's a tie ball game. Let's take a look at that coming up once again. Now you're looking at it from the end zone camera just like you're the goalie. Just like you're standing in the goal. And you'll have an opportunity to see what it's like to be in that spot as the ball whistles in just to the right to knot it all up. Cortland now responding the four goals to Hobart four. And Dave, this is turning out to be the championship game it was billed to be. And the goal by All-American Bob Lydon. Boy, he got that pass in heavy traffic, got the shot <laughs> off over the defender who was on him, over his teammate and another defender, and passed the goalie. And now we're going to see the ball being awarded to Hobart without a faceoff because Portland State did not have enough men on the field within 20 seconds. That's a new rule this year, and that's a loss of a ball. Equivalent to a delay of game penalty. 4-4, final two minutes of the first half. Losing his stick there was John DeMeo. DeMeo let his stick go because the Hobart player was hanging on to it. Somebody's out of the crease. Here's the shot. Kick save made by Jim Rod. The goalie was way out of position, but he looked like he made the kick save to prevent the go-ahead goal by Hobart. A la ice hockey as the goalie was caught out on a clear as you see a technical illegal procedure call being made. Let's take a look again. Watch his gorgeous save as the goalie had to recover after being caught out on a clear. He's going to come back, dive in there, and a kick save. Could you see, was that the defenseman or maybe the goalie in there, David? I think it was the goalie with his left foot. That's a good call. You can stop the, body with any, the ball with any part of your body. You can use your hands. You can't pick it up, but you can even use your hands to knock it down, just like a puck in hockey. And now, Portland State, apparently with the momentum, is on the offense. A little over a minute and a half remaining at halftime. This could be a big goal. A team that scores next goes into the locker room perhaps with a lead shot score there it is seconds after we mentioned it it is Cortland State grabbing the lead for the second time in the game the goal by number 32 John Kerner and all, all's fair in uh, or excuse me turnabout's fair play here and they were turning the favor that Hobart gave them in the end of the first quarter by going up by an extra goal, by shooting it in there, and then Cortland State, after tying the ball game up with a little under a minute and a half to go in the first half, responds by putting in a beautiful goal against Hobart. On the faceoff, again, it is Hobart with Bill Sipperly controlling. Five to four, Cortland on top. 
Sipperly quickly toward the box. Sipperly dumping it off at the point. Number 24 is uh, Mike Morfitt. Hobart now looking maybe for one last shot in this half with a minute to play. Good defensive work. A double team by O'Leary and by John Disler. And Disler, the big defenseman, All-American, comes away with the ball. Now Cortland not only looking to clear as Fitzgerald comes across, but looking to take a two-goal lead before the half. Ketzner into the box. And we get a whistle for a timeout. So now with 40 seconds to play in the first half, a tremendous shift in momentum. And you can see it as the teams uh, return to their respective huddles. Cortland State leading it 5-4 to four and a chance Joe Harlan to uh, pick up an insurance goal and take a, a two-goal lead into the locker room at the half. And let's see if we can go down into the huddle right now of Cortland State and let's listen and see if we can hear what the strategy is going to be. All right. I want it in first. I want it in first. All right. He's if calling for an invert, ball, which I we'll explain in a minute. Red defense, red defense, so attack. So if you go over, we're in red, all right? But fellas, let's use the time. Make sure, make sure we got back up on the shot. All right, now. Can you want to start it? Let's go, physical, fellas, physical. What Winters is calling for from Cortland State is an invert, and that means he's going to take his midfield men who are normally out in the center area in front of the goal and put them behind and move the attackmen out front. The reason he's going to do that is that the midfielders are played defensively generally by other midfielders, and it's more difficult for them to be in a defensive position. So he's going to take his middies and make attackmen out of them, make a middies out of the attackmen and attackmen out of the middies, and see if he can, with 40 seconds to go, get a goal. So you should see the middies going around behind. Now, what you should expect to see from Hobart to counter this is they should put in six men with long defensive sticks, which is precisely what they're going to do to try and uh, take away the advantage that Hobart, excuse me, that Cortland State might have by the invert. 40 seconds remain. And here we go. Number 20 is Curtis. And uh, just as he throws the ball in, we get another call from the official to stop play with 37 seconds remaining. Discussion amongst the uh, officials, and Kurt Stokes will have the ball one more time to start things out. And Stokes goes behind the net. Keep an eye on the clock. 30 seconds to play, first half. Portland State leading 5-4. Coming in front is Davis. His shot bounced off the foot of the goaltender. And here comes Ed Cooney of Hobart. 20 seconds on the clock. Long feed downfield, and it is uh, let let loose by goalie Jim Braun because uh, possession will belong to the team closest and that of course was Jim Braun. 12 with seconds and the clock still running. Excuse me, with 9 seconds to go, well the clock's still running and of course it's unofficial, the official time is kept on the field, but let's look for these guys to probably throw the ball pretty close to the length of the field or just hold it till the quarter runs out and maintain their lead. Let's fly, John, let's fly, baby! And the ball loose as it comes toward midfield. Clock has long since expired, the scoreboard that is. Now the game clock, I believe, has run out as there are some tempers flaring. Near the end of this first half. And that's brought quickly under control as the referees remind the players that they're here to play lacrosse. They're all good athletes, and they know that, and they want to go into uh, locker rooms at halftime and to discuss relative strategies here. I believe the officials uh, won't let that one get away. Larry O'Leary, the All-American defenseman for Cortland State, was involved in there, and we may see some penalties assessed as we come back for the third quarter. But for now, we're at the half of the NCAA Division III championship game with a score, Cortland 5 and Hobart 4. June 12th. Three NCAA championship game with Cortland on top of Hobart, five to four. We have as one of our guests the head of the NCAA lacrosse committee, uh, Mort Lapointe. Mort, could you briefly explain the difference between divisions one, two, and three in the NCAA? Well, Joe, it's uh, determined by the amount of financial aid that uh, is given. Division three uh, is, is not uh, allowed to give any aid. Uh, be, the difference between one and two, uh, one is allowed 80 scholarships, uh, division two, 60. Uh, but this uh, 
football and basketball are not included. Division one, they're allowed, I believe, uh, 95 scholarships Division in football, and in Division two, it's 45. We also have as our halftime guest the chief referee of the United States, Freddie Eisenbrand. Freddie, let us, let us ask you a question between the difference between a technical penalty and a penalty that's a personal, particularly when we have a situation where there's a slow flag. What is the difference? Well, the, te the technical foul is usually 30 seconds or change of possession, or if it's a loose ball, you have possession uh, given to the offended team. The personal foul can be from one to three minutes or an expulsion, which is an automatic three minutes. A trick stick is an automatic three minutes. What happens now when I foul the opposing team and they're on the offense and they're going to the goal and that yellow flag goes up in the air and that team scores a goal? If it's a technical penalty, is the foul wiped out or does it stay in? If it's a technical foul, the foul is wiped out by the scoring of the goal. If it's a personal foul, the man goes out for a minute regardless of whether the goal is scored or not. Thank you, Freddie Eisenbrand and Mort LaPointe for that explanation. And we'll be back for more on halftime with Dave Cohen and some halftime statistics right after this. We're at halftime here. At and uh, this young fellow uh, enjoying the game, although perhaps not the score. This was the high point of the afternoon for him, at least in the first half. Let's look at the halftime statistics, Joe, and see if they can give us any indication as to why Cortland has a lead on Hobart. Well, it's pretty obvious that uh, Cortland, although taking less shots, has really had a much better percentage on goal, 35%. That, in essence, means that every uh, third shot that they've taken has gone right in between the pipes. On the other hand, Hobart taking 22 shots to Cortland's 14. You have to figure that sometime along the game, if they continue to take that many shots, that they themselves are going to uh, get a lot more goals out of it. In re with respect to saves, Cortland's goalie playing a fine first half, keeping them in the ball game with eight saves to Hobart's goalie for five. But faceoffs. What a telling statistic. Hobart 11, Cortland State 1. How many times do you see a team win 11 out of 12 faceoffs and trail at the half? It's incredible, and that cannot continue to happen. If Hobart continues to win the faceoffs, it's going to be a tough day for Cortland. <laughs> We'll be right back with more from the NCAA Division III Lacrosse Championship right after this. We're back at Hobart for the second half of today's NCAA Division III Championship game. The Cortland State Red Dragons in the dark uniforms or the red are leading it by a score of 5-4. Face off for the second half coming up now between Cortland and Hobart. And on the faceoff, Bill Sipperly wins it from Bob Leiden. And here come the Hobart Statesmen. 30 minutes of lacrosse left in the NCAA Division II National Championship. Into the box they come. And a pass knocked away and picked up by Cortland State. That is number 22 with the ball. John Dissler, the big defenseman, the All-American. And a whistle stops play. And the Cortland State player raising his hand, apparently indicating that that penalty is going to inure to the benefit of Cortland State. 34 white one minute slash. And there's going to be a one minute slash called against Tobart. N number 34, Jeff Noss. Let's watch it coming up right now. 34 caught him right on the head. So that'll be a one minute extra man situation for Cortland State, who's already on top, five to four, and they'll have a chance to draw first blood at the beginning of this, the second quarter of the NCAA Division III Championship. Number four is Mark Ketzner, and playing catch with them there is number 30, that's Mark Lezinski. Ketzner and Lezinski, and this is Ketzner. He starts toward the restraining line, into the box, and back it goes to Ketzner. Back to Lezinski. Cross feed to... 
32, that is Kerner, and his shot goes out of bounds, but closest to it is Bob Leiden. And 32, Steve, excuse me, 32 for Cortland State was lucky to get that ball, John Kerner, because it had filtered through. The feed originally was to go to the crease to Bob Russo, who couldn't handle the ball. Ball being put back in place now by John Displer behind. Substitutions coming on, Larry O'Leary, number six, and number 28, Pat Plunkett. And play resumes again. It's Ketzner out of the point. Ketzner with a feed down low. It is uh, almost knocked in there by 23, Bob Leiden, and it is lost on the far sideline by John Turner. And so Cortland State now will be forward on their extra man play. Hobart will have an opportunity to put the ball into play. Hobart needs a goal, had needed to stop Cortland State and get the ball back in order to have a shot at having the score. Opening moments of play, second half. And the long feed is taken by number 18 for uh, Hobart, and that is uh, Fred Mosier. Now Hobart into the attacking zone, into the box. And Hobart Teams will be even state. now. Hobart trailing 5-4. Long feed to the top of the box. Left-handed shot, score! And the fans here go crazy as this back-and-forth seesaw game once again is tied at 5-all. A beautiful bouncing outside shot as Hobart goes up 5-all. Let's take a look at this again. A long lobbing pass out to the midfield. Number 21 for Hobart, bouncing it into the goal to tie it up. A beautiful, beautiful goal by Mark D'Arcangelo. And so we've got a new game now, tied at five. And here come the Portland State Red Dragons. They dominated the second period, outscoring uh, Hobart three to nothing. Back up, back up, go Mary team! Mary, midfield on number six. Hold the team! Hold the back team! slowing it down now. He's checked over there by number 18, Fred Mosier. O'Leary has it knocked away by Mosier. And taken down by defenseman Steve Wood. The big stick. He sends it cross field. Out of the net to help out if needed is Guy Van Arsdale. And here come the Hobart Statesmen. Across midfield, ball knocked loose and taken back by Hobart. Plunkett tries to shovel it over and he does successfully. And Hobart maintaining control, setting up now to go on offense. Mosier, 18. Out to the point. And now on the side to Petoza. And back behind the net it goes. This is McAdam, number 11. The shot to score. And this crowd is really coming alive as Hobart down one goal at halftime now explodes with two quick goals on the board to go up six to five. 11.51 remaining in this third period. What a fantastic game we have on our hands. Once again, let's watch it. It's going to be a long lobbing feed out front. A carbon copy of the goal that was scored just before. Coming in right-handed, slamming no screen at all. John Feinstein. Two similar goals. Long feed from behind the net. Out to the wing. Uh, two quick Hobart goals to put the statesman on top now by a score of five, six to five. We're not aggressive. All right, the face-off one more time, controlled by Sipperly, but his behind-the-back pass is intercepted by Cortland State, and the ball uh, regained by Sipperly. Sipperly on the feed, and here comes Hobart again behind the net. McAdam, who made that assist moments ago, he feeds out to D'Arcangelo, gets by his man, gets by another, he shoots, hits the pole, and it's cleared out quickly by Cortland State. Offside call at midfield. But the offside's going to go against Hobart, and the fans here don't like the call. They thought that number 13 for Cortland State was offside, Terry Davis, but they ruled. Well, they reversed the ruling now. They have reversed the ruling. And now, <laughs> winners, winners for Cortland State is voicing his objections. A rebound in place being closely guarded, and a timeout being called. A timeout being called by Cortland State. And the Hobart fans... <laughs> the Hobart fans were really up in arms about 
got that call, David. Coach, I don't want to hear anymore. I don't want to hear anymore. You had this game has been against Portland. Every single one, Doc. Okay? Coach, you're telling me the push to me now. I'm just telling you something. Okay, I didn't fine. question okay, anything. Fine. All right? Good. And Bruce is here. Okay, fine. Okay, now. I pointed the wrong way, okay? But I don't see your logic. My kid goes, I asked him to keep on. I could see if he went over forward. Coach, he turned around and fell over. Well, then let's get you a signal. Well, there's a rare moment in sports. Uh, the referee said to the Cortland coach, okay, I made a mistake. I called it the wrong way. And the Cortland coach said, hey, how about my boy that uh, had pushed over, got pushed over? And the referee said, well, he fell over the line. So, <laughs> so in this heated battle in which uh, Hobart has gone up 6-5, to five, they'll now have the ball in what was originally called an offsides against Hobart. And the score remains, Hobart 6 and Portland State 5. Hobart on the attack now, number 11, Roy McAdam. Hobart slowing it down momentarily, McAdam again has it. Behind the net, let's see if they can set a man up on the wing once more. McAdam reverses his field, goes back to Darkangelo behind that. This is Larry Grimaldi, out to the point. And back on the wing, bouncing shot gets by Jim Braun. He may be closest to it, no. Yes. The ball is going to be awarded to the goalie, and again, this is the situation. It's just not the man closest to the back line, but the man that's closest to the point where the ball went out, and that's why Cortland State has got possession now. 10.51 to play, third quarter, and it is uh, Hobart leading Portland State by the score of 6-5. to five. And defensive pressure being employed by uh, Hobart as Portland State has some trouble getting it out of their half of the field. Here's John Fitzgerald, double team. He's it way down the field, and it's knocked out of bounds. That belongs to Hobart. And that's a buddy pass of the first quarter. You've got to stand there and take it. And your teammate flips that ball down there, and he's lucky he wasn't crushed. Thirty-one is John Feinstein. He scored moments ago, spinning by his man now and feeding down the sideline. Hobart moving the ball beautifully now. It's behind the net. Now we've got a whistle that stops play. It's going to be a slashing call. It's going to go against Portland State. The ball happened. By so Cortland will now deploy those five defensemen with the long sticks in there. Kind of a diamond pattern. Two across the front, one in the middle, and two in the uh, back area of the goal. And Hobart now goes up on extra man for a period of one minute as a result of a slashing call. Ten minutes, ten seconds remaining, and this is the third period. Hobart, which trailed five to four at halftime, is now up six to five, and they're on extra man. Hobart has had four extra man opportunities, but have not converted a single one in this game. Portland is two out of three. Shot from the point, and it's stick save, knocked out of bounds. It still belongs to Hobart. Larry Grimaldi is number 12, and he'll start the play. Jim Braun, who let two whistlers in from the outside, and the persons of uh, number 31, 21, Mark Darkangelo, and 31, John Feinstein, has suddenly become very, very tough in there. And now there's going to be another penalty called, and Cortland State will be down two men. So they're going to go into a box. Four men across in the middle. Six on four. And they're taking their time on the Hobart Statesman. Now his shot misses. Grimaldi closest to it. And he regains uh, control for Hobart. Quite often, offensive teams have a tougher time scoring with two men up than one because they can't move that defense around. Once again, here come the States break. Right now, it's a 1-3 uh, or 1-4-1. One, one. And here's a shot from the point. Partially deflected. Feinstein knocked it through the crease, or Fitzgerald did 41. And somebody stepped in. Boy, that's a big break. That's a big break for Cortland State, who was two men down. If they get possession of that ball. 
Now one of the men is, uh, let's see if they're permitted a man in. They're going to have to have three men on that Cortland side of the field. So you look right down, let's expect to see that ball just thrown the length of the field right now and, uh, because this man's going to be double teamed. Mark Ketzner behind uh, his own net being double teamed and trying to leg it out. He gets a stick around the head and we get a call right there. And he's going to draw a holding penalty it appears. We'll have to wait to see what the referee rules. It could be a holding or a slash. And if that's true, Cortland State has done a fantastic job. It's a technical hold. And Cortland State, as we watch it once again, the stick being hooked underneath the throat of the player. <laughs> that's what you call a hold, Dave. <laughs> now that is an unintentional call. <laughs> And the bottom line is that Cortland State, who is down two men and down a goal to Hobart, now has the ball on their extra man. They'll have to get that ball into the box. As you can see, they only have four men down on this end of the field. They'll have to get that ball into the box if they can, and that'll free up the other man. Here's Ketzner, and he gets into the box, and here comes the man O'Leary back on the field. He just headed for the corner of the box and uh, went back outside to get the man back on. And that'll be a 30-second extra man play, so Cortland State will have a t chance to not the score. So they go from two men down to one man advantage and the ball is loose near the midfield area and uh, Potosa number 15 dribbling it forward big stick Fitzgerald got it Potosa took it away Fitzgerald got it back and lost it and turnabout's fair play as Hobart takes the play to Cortland and interrupts their extra man play and if they can put the ball in it'll be all even once again 8.49 to play third quarter there's only, only two goals this quarter both scored by Hobart and the name of this game has been squandered extra man plays. Here come the statesmen once more. 15, Scott Petosa. Number 11 is Roy McAdam. There's a feed back behind the net to Petosa. He goes out to the point, throws it away. It's loose at midfield. And everybody stays properly on side. And Hobart regroups quickly. Here's Grimaldi in position. Nice point-blank shot and the save by Jim Braun. And he drew a hold going in there, too, from the defenseman. So once again, Portland State is going to be on down man D. It's going to be the EMO, the extra man Daddy offense for Hobart. Watch him go to the goal. Watch him get a stick wrapped around him here. Here's the hold right there. He manages to evade it, and had that ball gone in the goal, he would have gotten the goal, and the extra man play would have been eradicated. But that is not the case. Hobart now an extra man for 30 seconds. John Fitzgerald, the guilty man. And once again, extra man opportunity for Hobart. They're 0 for 5 in the game. On the advantages. Darkangelo, 21, back behind the net. They feed it now. Let's see if they can work that offside, off uh, wing point. There it is. Then there it is. Just as you caught it, Dave, they look for the backside cut in the person of Dark Angelo, who stuck in behind. The feed came across the top of the goal into Darkie's stick, and he pumped it in as now Hobart goes up on top, 7-5, to five, much to the delight of this huge throng here. Let's watch it again. Extra man play. They're 0 for 5 coming into this extra man play. Ball's behind. Everybody's looking behind. It's looped out to Darkie. He takes one strut with a stick and flips it in the corner. He got number 26, uh, Jerry DeMeo, to commit. And then he stepped into the slot and fired to score his third goal of the game. It's now 7-5 to five as we return to live play. Hobart winning the faceoff. And again, a call going against... It's going to go against Portland State. Mark Ketzner on a slash. And it should be another extra man play. Let's take a look and see if that was just a technical call because we see Ketzner still in the ball game. And he should come out... I believe they called it on 13 uh, Davis. You're right. 13 Terry Davis, the attackman, was Ketzner voicing an objection. So Hobart again on extra man, now up by two goals. Big John Feinstein, the midfielder, beating the Mosier. And here come the Statesmen again. They work the ball around smartly. The feed to Darkhanton. All this time he can't get the shot away. Instead he goes back out to the point. Now from the right wing. Good defensive work. Knocked the ball from the man, Roy McAdam, but McAdam comes back with it. Over his head, back out to the point. 
D'Arcangelo feeds the middle. Shot is high and out of bounds. You've got to credit this Cortland State defense, uh, Dave Cohen. They have held Hobart to but one goal in five or six extra man situations. And here they are faced with it again. Shot from the point, and uh, Braun got enough stick on it to knock it out of bounds. Seven to five, Hobart leading Cortland. Seven minutes, three seconds to play, third quarter. Hobart has scored the only three goals of this quarter. After Cortland scored the only three goals in the second quarter. Larry Grimaldi to D'Arcangelo. They double team him now. Out to the point he goes. Shot saved by Braun, and the ball still belongs to. Hobart. Quickly, they put it back in play again. Right down the middle, the shot, save Braun. Loose in front is Sipperly, and the ball is put in. Will it count? Yes. It looked like Larry Grimaldi getting his stick in there as the ball was bouncing in the air, and it's number 12, Grimaldi, getting a garbage goal, that garbage goal we talked about so much before that the goalies hate when that ball is bouncing around loose on the crease area. Outstanding live programming like the NCAA College World Series, top-ranked boxing in, gold medal basketball, fan favorites like Auto Racing 80, carte blanche and Grandmasters Tennis, Australian Rugby, and Australian Rules Football, Rodeo, Polo, Horse Shows, Jumping, PKA, Full Contact Karate, and Pro Celebrity Golf. Championship events in AAU, indoor diving, NCAA, golf, tennis, and lacrosse. All of this and more in the month of June on your Total Sports Network, ESPN. And Cortland State being awarded the ball because Hobart did not have enough men on the field after that uh, eighth goal that they scored. And so Cortland State is now on the move. Cortland State having surrendered the last four goals in the game, and they're down now by their biggest margin, three goals. That's the deficit they face. Spinning free for the shot, and the save made by Van Arsdale, who hasn't been tested at all in the third quarter. Larry O'Leary, number six, takes a shot on the head, and down he goes. Referee Jake Curran from the Syracuse area right on the play and calls the ball, calls the play very correctly, a one-minute slashing penalty. So now Cortland will have an opportunity to, re to return the extra man offensive favor against Hobart. On the previous goal, the one that was scored before on that garbage goal, ball flipping in the air, watch for the stick of number 12. He just flipped it in there, and boy, is he a happy man. He looked like a wide receiver as he <laughs> made sure his feet did not go over the line into the crease. Now Cortland State on the extra man. They're down, however, 8-5. to five. This is the biggest lead any team has enjoyed in this game. They feed it into the slot for the shot. Van Arsdale with a save. And it goes out of bounds as uh, Pat Pluckett, number 28, was there defending for a Hobart. Cortland State will have another opportunity. That was a one-minute slashing call. They've got approximately 30 seconds left on it. A beautiful save by the fairly heavy set, wouldn't you say, Hobart goalie. Cortland now putting the ball into play on extra man. Ketzner number four, long shot goes over the head of the goalie and everybody, but Cortland, of course, closest to it, they will retain possession. 23 for uh, Cortland, Bob Lydon, the All-American midfielder. Quickly, they put it back in play. Again, it's Ketzner. He steps into the box. He feeds on the side to Kerner. Kerner back to Ketzner. Down low, shot score. No, it went behind the net, excuse me. Pass back in front, Kerner scores. A beauty, a beauty! Right-handed goal, number 32 for Hobart. Steve Wood, excuse me, number 32 for Portland State. John Kerner, as he right-hand rifles one, low past the goalie for Hobart, Van Arsdale. And so Cortland State that quickly is back within two goals. This has been a game of spurts. And as we check this sixth goal by Cortland State, watch the shot by Kerner. And that was a very, very alert goal. The one before, the shot before had been averted. Van behind, very alertly picked it up and flipped it out front. And now Hobart, once again, as they've done all day, has dominated the faceoff. Bill Sipperly, the man who has, uh, as you said, dominated the faceoffs. 
And quickly, Hobart sets up on offense. It is eight to six. Cortland scored the first two, Hobart the next four, then Cortland the next three, then Hobart the next four, and finally Cortland scored. Jim Braun taking the brunt of that bouncing shot and just deflecting it out of bounds. Cortland a somewhat rougher road uh, to the playoffs than Hobart had. Hobart won very easily in its first two games as we take a look at this uh, save coming up once again. Very, very nice save. Deflected off as the goalie dives and makes the save. Under five minutes to play, third quarter. Hobart with the ball and the lead. 21, Mark D'Arcangelo. He feeds back behind the net. Roy McAdam from General Brown High School. They call him General Brown. Out to the point. The line, the fire. Jim Braun, nice save. Quickly, he outlets it to uh, Bill Dunn. And here come the Cortland State Red Dragons. They're heading for the box. And Larry O'Leary, number six, gets the ball. And they'll hold that ball so that they can get those defensive midfielders out there, put the offensive ones in with a short stick, so Cortland State can see if they can whittle away at this 8-6 to six lead enjoyed right now by Hobart. John Kerner, fake right, went left. He scored a moment ago. He still has the ball, and he can't get an angle for a shot. Bob Russo looked to set the pick. Kerner gets by him. Knocked out of his hands from behind. Nice defensive work by the big sticks for Hobart. And now Hobart brings it across the midfield stripe. Hobart sending it quickly. Potosa, the fee, the shot, saved by Braun. What a gorgeous save in there. A fantastic save as once again Jim Braun is the man of the hour keeping his team in this game. Hobart having trouble picking up the ground ball. Terry Davis bats it ahead onto the stick of Ed Cooney. It's knocked loose and it's still uh, anybody's ball but Hobart regains it. They go back to Van Arsdale. He flips out this way and flips it too far, and now the ball will belong to Cortland State in the uh, attacking zone. Eight They've thrown a lot, excuse me, a lot of firepower out here. A real credit to both goalies, Jim Braun and uh, Jim, excuse me, Jim Braun for uh, Cortland State, especially holding the door closed. I th would have expected that we would see an awful lot more on the scoreboard here than we've seen so far. Jim Braun stopped 11 shots in the first half, 11 saves, and only five for Guy Van Arsdale. Here's a repeated stick check by Mark Ketzner, and he cannot get the ball away. He was detected at stepping out of bounds. Jake Carr and the referee right there on the sidelines. Uh, Cortland State, very happy recipient of that call, and they'll be on offense now. Did you see the way that O'Leary kept hitting that stick, trying to knock the ball out of the... The stick of the Hobart player, and finally he succeeded in driving him out of bounds. Hilary a little upset with himself at losing that ball in the midfield. Three minutes to play, third quarter. Mark Ketzner with a feed into the slot, but it's taken away by Hobart. And regained by Cortland State. Ed Cooney battling for it along with Matt Hine. Somebody threw a stick into the action. 25 is Matt Hine. He goes back to his defenseman, John Seifer. And now Hobart slows it down a little as they make changes on the sideline. Both teams deploying the men with the long sticks on the midfield when they're on the defense, and those are the changes that we're seeing made right now. A very well-coached ball game on both sides. The goalie coming way out and dumping it off to Mosier. Mosier to Feinstein, who slipped and could not control, and now here comes Cortland State. John Fitzgerald. He gets it across. Cortland State down by two. The Red Dragons who beat Hobart 12-11 in the 1975 Division II-3 championship game. This is the first ever Division III game, exclusively Division III. And you're seeing it exclusively on ESPN. Mark Ketzner behind the net to Davis. Outside it goes. Stokes is number 20. Now Ketzner. And we're seeing the deliberate Cortland State offense. 
Cortland would like to get another goal here so that they could end the third quarter within one point of their arch rival Hobart, and that's what they're looking to do right now. Ketzner loses the stick and the ball. Fred Mosier with a nice defensive play, and he gets it upfield quickly. Look how Hobart moves that ball around. That time a little bit too quickly, as Petoza could not control the ball on the sideline. David, it looks that even though Cortland's trying to slow the ball down and go one-on-one, -on -one, it looks to me that they really are much better off when they run and gun a little bit and move that ball a lot more. You know, Ketzner came in here with 29 goals and 28 assists, and he has not scored this afternoon. You see the scoreboard showing just over a minute to play, third quarter, and Cortland State once some more. Comes up here. The goalie run uh, almost underthrew his man Fitzgerald, and the big guy maneuvers, loses the ball, comes across, and has to jump back into his defensive position right in front of the net. Here's Roy McAdam, the most valuable player this year for Hobart. He flips it out to uh, D'Arcangelo, number 21. He's already had three goals in this game. He heads into the box, changes hands. His feet is uh, knocked away nicely on a good defensive play down there by Brad Gurla. Regain and missed on the shot is now, and the ball still belongs to Hobart. Seven seconds to play. Let's see if they set up a quick play now, Joe Harlan, in the final seven seconds of the third quarter. David, I would look for them to flip the ball out front and just try and get a screen, just a shot with a couple men in front. And I think that's exactly what we're going to see. And uh, let's look for number 10 to take the shot. McAdam feeding, and it's stolen away as we get down to the final seconds, and that is it. We've played three quarters in the NCAA Division III National Lacrosse Championship with a score, Hobart 8 and Cortland 6. Live professional boxing is back on the weekly network television scene, and ESPN has it. Your total sports network brings you top-ranked boxing, featuring many of the top young fighters in the pro ranks, each and every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 6 p.m. Pacific. ESPN and Top Rank Incorporated, headed by renowned matchmaker Bob Arum, have joined forces to bring you an action-filled boxing card each week from such locations as Las Vegas, Chicago, Philadelphia, Tottawa, New Jersey, and Atlantic City, New Jersey. Seven weight classifications are included, from featherweight all the way up to heavyweight. That's live, top-ranked boxing, every Thursday at 9, exclusively on ESPN. And Dave Kahn, the third quarter ending statistics are very telling. It shows that Hobart has played a strong offensive game, but Cortland has had a tremendous job, particularly in the goal. 16 saves being credited to the, Co uh, the Cortland State goalie, 7 to Hobart, although Hobart has outfaced off Cortland 15-3. to three. It's Sipperly again winning the faceoff, this time taking it from Kurt Stokes. He has been dominant in that department this afternoon. Sipperly. Feeding to Roy McAdam, now Scott Petoza behind the net. You hear those names quite frequently, Petoza and McAdam, they handle the ball just about every time downfield. Now McAdam behind the net. Petoza's in front, so is now 34. And back behind the net, this time D'Arcangelo. Now D'Arcangelo spins free, doesn't have an angle for the shot. Takes his time, a lot of time he has behind the net. That's because Cortland State is playing that zone defense and they very seldom go behind unless the man brings them behind. They do not play a man-on-man -man that much. They feed it out to the wing, the shot and the save made by Jim Rod. Can't say enough about him. His 16th save of the game so far and he has really shut the door with rare exception against Hobart and that's the reason that his team is still in contention although Hobart was favored today coming into the contest. I want to ask you, Jeff, whether a short goal, uh, Joe, whether a short goaltender has any sort of advantage in lacrosse. He generally does because people try and shoot high on him, and that's not the place to shoot unless you're point blank. One minute gone in the fourth quarter. It's 8-6. Hobart again. Braun with a nice save. He's surrounded by white shirts. Throws it away. Sipperly. Oh, he's Petosa it. misses and scores again on the rebound. They will not allow that goal, however. Or will they? Yes. They're going to allow the goal. A beautiful one-on-one -on -one situation where Sipperly stole the ball from the goalie Braun and came right in. Braun stuffed him. The ball came back out. Sipperly got another opportunity. He put it in the goal. Let's take a look at this. 
I said he was surrounded by white shirts on the clear. Threw it into the stick of Scott Petosa. He dribbled it once, came in, Braun made the save. Petosa leaned in and got the shot away before he fell on the crease. A very good call, David. He managed it, tight rope that crease, and not fall in. We thought for a second the goal was not going to be allowed, but it is, and Hobart goes on top, 9-6. to six, A very big goal for Hobart. Time starting to run down a little bit on Cortland State. Once again, Cortland State facing a three-goal deficit. That's the biggest margin each, either team has enjoyed in the game. Cortland State back quickly. They have a man open. They couldn't spot him coming down the right wing. Kurt Stokes, bouncing shot. Save Van Arsdale, and he controls and clears. Now McAdam. Starts it up the left sideline. He accelerates. Von Dissler gets by Bill Dunn outside to the point Jeff Nouse takes a body check back to McAdam he comes in all the way in and he stepped into the crease and that'll be a call against Tobar not right now but very soon Cortland State is going to have to come out of that slow down offense that they've been employing and start taking the ball to the cooker and see if they get back a couple of these goals Three goals is a lot in this game. It's been a hard-fought defensive contest, and they're going to have to start getting offensive-minded right away. Teams playing at even strength and almost losing the ball behind the net. It was Dissler. He's an All-American defenseman. Pressure being put on by Hobart. It worked last time, and Braun uh, has to bring it out. Portland State having a lot of difficulty getting it across to start something offensively. Nistler. On the side to uh, Bill Dunn. Now they get it in fine position. Slipping and falling on the play is Perry Davis. And uh, Van Arsdale picks up the loose ball, but we'll have a call. Referee, the to the, excuse me, David, the, that little slip was an assist from the Hobart player who raked the stick down across the ankles of the Cortland State man, and that's going to be a one-minute extra man play. Let's take a look at it again and if, see if we can see that coming up right now. There it is, a little bit of a trip there, preventing really a goal from being scored because the man would have been wide open there. So Cortland State now will have an opportunity on extra man to see if they can inch a little bit closer to Hobart, who's gone out ahead 9-6 to six with 12-23 remaining in the game. It's Cortland State now enjoying the man advantage. They feed it to Stokes. Larry O'Leary's shot from close range. Knocked aside. Van Arsdale way out of the net. He takes a slight check. And there's going to be a penalty call downfield, and it's going to go against Cortland State. I guess it wasn't that slight. <laughs> and once again, the squandered extra man play that has been the nemesis for Hobart early on and now is plaguing Cortland State causes the ball to be turned over and Hobart not only will not have to face Cortland State on the extra man but they'll have possession of that ball enjoying a three goal lead as clock, the clock rapidly becomes the enemy of Cortland State Hobart College has won the national championship in 1976 and 1977 they were runners up in 74 and 77 and 78 each time losing by only one goal teams are at equal strength now Hobart 9, Cortland State 6 just under 12 minutes to play in the 4th and final quarter Joe what do we do in the event of an overtime? We'll go to a sudden death uh, extra 4 minute period but let's wait to see if that's going to happen McAdam McAdam to Grimaldi jump shot and Braun made the save and whips it out to the midfield area but Hobart sticks it back in Nistler, however, controls and gets it downfield. Nistler to John Kerner. He sets up in the corner. Shot from the point, and it's knocked away. Hobart has it. Down the middle they come now. Roy McAdam trying to pick up the bouncing ball. And the Cortland defense. Ed Kwiatkowski gets it upfield. 
Portland going to a lot of long clearing passes now, trying to get the ball down in the attacking zone quickly. Ketzler behind the net. 10.55 to play, and Cortland down by three. One of the problems is Watch this. Oh, beautiful shot by Ketzler. Beautiful it like, shot. It looked to me, David, as though a save might have been made, and the ball may have hit an opposing player and gone back in the goal. It looked like there was a little bit of a jump there. But at any rate, the bottom line is Cortland State gets its seventh goal as a man rolled around from behind. Let's take a look at it. Coming up once again, you we'll see the man rolling around from the left. We're behind the goal right now, and he's going to come around the left side of your screen, and let's watch this as he shoots it in, hits, that's exactly what happened. Hit the top of the goal, and then the bottom pipe, and then went in like a three-cornered billiard shot, Dave Cohen. First goal of the game for Mark Ketzner out of Massapequa, Long Island. And as we started to say, as we watched the face-off, one of the problems with using those defensemen with long sticks on the defense is when you come down on a fast break, you've got to stop hey. and substitute men. And now Cortland stayed on the move, winning the face-off. They took it away from Bill Sipperly for one of a few times on the afternoon. They should take advantage of this momentum right now and take the ball to the goal. Very important time. Ketzner, nice move, gets into the crease. Now he finds Kerner. Ground ball shot, save. Nicely by Van Arsdale. Back to get it is Kerner. And uh, he nearly loses it, but eludes his man. And his man loses the stick. Kerner comes back into the box. Kerner, back out to Ketzner. Ketzner. That pass was not intended for that man who took, took it and shot it wide. It was intended on the on the left wing. Number 14, Bob Russo stole the feed away and almost got a goal out of it. Portland State retains possession. Ten minutes to play. Fourth quarter, they're down by two. A long, long time to play. The feed in front, nobody there in the red shirts, but Terry Davis tries to scoop it in, and Ketchner tries to bat it in. There's Davis throwing a shoulder into the Hobart player who's down on the ground, and Van Arsdale controls. He stepped out of the crease, and he stays out of the crease. And once again, the slowdown is the defensive midfielders come off the field, and the gentlemen with the short sticks go on for Hobart, and the reverse situation taking place with respect to Cortland State. Now let's see if we have that little cat and mouse game. Nope. Hurry up, Betty. They get it up to Ed Cooney. Cooney being played by uh, 13, Terry Davis, and he flips it crossfield to his fellow defenseman over there. Now he shovels it for Darkangelo. He seems to be taking his time as he comes to the side of the box. Now to Grimaldi. Grimaldi to Naus. Naus winds, fires. It's wide. And uh, they tried to bat it back in the crease for Braun to clear it. Instead, Petosa comes away with it. That was almost very, very costly. Flipping that ball in there is a dangerous move. Scott Petosa accelerating and going to the left side. Once again, Cortland State in kind of that sliding zone out there. Petosa gets a return feed. That's McAdam behind the net. Number 12 cutting to the crease is Grimaldi. Petosa's right in front. McAdam reverses his field. Darkangelo. He's got good moves. He flips it out onto the wing. And a stick check from behind breaks up the play momentarily. But Darkangelo has it again. Jump feed in front. Here's the shot by now. Score! Attackman, number 34, on a beautiful shot from outside. That ball was moved around from behind the goal, came around and around, and they're now getting the feed out front, standing on a nice screen and blowing it in there to extend Hobart's lead once again by three, up 10-7, to seven, and Cortland State will take a breather on that one. The right kind of shot in the right place. Eight twenty-three to play, fourth and final quarter, and Hobart leading Cortland State by a score of ten to seven. I think we're going to see Cortland State now go into a different type of offense. They're going to start. Also, I think we're also going to start seeing a, a little more body, David. 
Well, you can have all the latest news from the world of sports when you want it, thanks to ESPN Sports Center. Sports Center brings you 30-minute shows throughout each day, including 7 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. editions, and also 8.30 p.m. on the West Coast, packed full of the latest scores, highlights, and interviews. In addition, you're continually updated on all the late-breaking sports bulletins. Sports Center is the most comprehensive sports news program on television, and it's yours exclusively on your total sports network, ESPN. And now as the two teams break for the timeout, let's see if Cortland State gets out of that settled down offense, tries to move the ball a little bit more toward the goal, and let's see if we don't see a little bit more body out there, a little bit more hitting on Cortland State's part uh, to try and intimidate Hobart a little bit. Of course, it's a dangerous tactic. It can backfire. It can mean that a lot of men are going to be left open, and at this point, it really doesn't matter because Cortland State needs to score. Joe, in a game of uh, offensive spurts where teams put together two, three, and four goals at a time, the last five goals have been interchanged between the teams, but it still remains a three-goal lead for Hobart, and again, they win the faceoff. And that's been the key so far. There's some body work after Sipley won the faceoff. 23, Bob Leiden was all over him. And there's an offsides detected against Cortland State, which is going to be kind of a meaningless call because possession had already been won after that offsides by Hobart. So Hobart, in essence, is just going to keep what they already had, and that's possession all even. Here come the statesmen. Statesmen once more. 49 is Bob Sipperly in the game. Now under eight minutes to play, and Hobart enjoying a three-goal advantage. Hobart now running their uh, second attack and second midfield. 43 is Tim Hoppy. 40 is Jim Beggins. There's Hoppy in pursuit on the sideline. And the ball regained by Scott Petoza. And Hobart now can tend to slow it down and let the clock work to their favor. With that three-goal lead, they're going to move that ball around a little bit. The winner comes away with a coveted title of NCAA champion. And both teams have won that title in the past, but this is the first Division III NCAA lacrosse championship. Slipping and going down right there is Kurt Stokes. And Hobart looks like they may control as McAdams over there. And uh, he keeps it in bounds, but it's stolen away by DeMeo who sends it into the attacking zone where Van Arsdale intercepts and ups it at the field. Here's Sipperly coming in. Sipperly with a feed to Naus and he lost it. He was at point blank range. Might have taken his eye off it. 43, Tim Hoppy. It has been all Hobart the last couple of minutes. Cortland State getting a lot of defense from those guys with the long sticks, but they've had a lot of problem clearing. Petoza. Being guarded by DeMeo. Petoza changing direction. DeMeo trying to upset him with a stick check. You know, David, both teams showing splendid conditioning here. Nobody seems to be tired at all. They're playing this game full tilt all the way through. This game being played with temperatures in the 70s, humidity quite low, and a very refreshing breeze. There's a feed, a jump shot by Nelson. Jim Braun there for the save. Nice play by Braun. Again, they have trouble clearing their defensive zone, and uh, now they'll have to try it once more. And that's due in part to the fact that they have those long defensive sticks, harder to handle the ball, a greater target to be checked, and that's why they're having trouble clearing. Now with under six minutes to go in the game. Hobart controlled and uh, ate up about two minutes of the clock, although they only got one shot on goal. Bill Dunn is 29. He goes back onside, and another midi comes across. Loose, ragged play as Cortland State tries to set up. They need a couple of scores in a hurry, down 10 to 7. That clock continues on its downward descent. 5.15 to play. Larry O'Leary. O'Leary being checked by Hoppy. O'Leary couldn't get an angle. Now O'Leary out to the point. Man changes hands to the shot. 
Not close, but still it stays in the hands of Cortland State. Most of the better players in the game, David, as you correctly point out, able to shoot with equal facility left-handed and right-handed. That was Brad Gurla shaken up in the early moments of the game, but uh, he's come back to take several shifts, but did not get a particularly good shot off right there. A stack in front of the net by Cortland State, and they lose the ball on the stick check. Coming away with it is Steve Wood. Now, Hobart fans sensing a national championship is at hand as they put it in. And the fans on the far side, they don't always get the benefit of being picked up on our crowd, Mike. The fans from Cortland State are ecstatic as we watch once again a long drive from the outside. And again, instead of the one-on-one, -on -one, a feed across to the open man that's called Team Lacrosse. Put the ball down, get a nice screen, and sure enough, within two goals now, four and a half minutes remaining in this, the NCAA Division III Lacrosse Championship. Joe Hart along with Dave Cohn on ESPN. A very, very important face-off here. Portland having some luck of late on the faceoffs, and let's see, did they come away with it? Whistle stops play. Illegal procedure, and it's going to go over to Cortland State, a big break. Cortland State, who has been on the short end of the ledger when it comes to faceoffs, is the beneficiary of a call, illegal procedure call, hand off the stick, and now Cortland State has an opportunity to draw within one goal if they'll move the ball in a teamwork fashion. That was Kurt Stokes, who was in on the faceoff, and he has the ball now. Four minutes, 20 seconds to play. Stokes comes into the box. He's got an angle, he shoots, and it just goes wide. Who will get to the ball first? Oh, it looked like Van Arsdale was there, but the call was made in favor of Cortland State. That time, Kurt Stokes made a good move, had the shot, but he bounced it a little bit wide of Van Arsdale. And, uh, and Cortland State almost guilty of not having the goal properly backed up. Terry Davis back there. Maybe he, uh, maybe he came out of the subway, Dave. Here we go again. Cortland State with Davis getting it to Stokes. Now they swing it to this side. Kerner fakes left and went right. Choked off. And now here's Mark Ketchner. They've got to move the ball. They can't stand still one-on-one. -on -one. Ketchner to Stokes. And they throw it away into the middle. Digging it out is Feinstein. And it's loose again in front. And coming away with it to Steve Wood. A very big clear if successful. And it is. Now under four minutes to go. Scott Patoza. He can run all day with the ball. Cortland State has got to be aggressive without fouling. They've got to come out and play the ball as well. Mark Darcangelo. Hobart looking uh, to spread it out and the ball out of bounds and it will uh, go over now to Cortland State. Cortland State playing in that zone defense, often confusing Hobart. Hobart having to make the long pass, the errant pass that time, which will give the ball once again for Cortland State. And we cannot repeat enough times how important it's going to be for Cortland State to move that ball and not go one-on-one -on -one because the collapsing defense of Hobart is going to be too much for them. Here's a long feed up to Fitzgerald over his head and out of bounds. No need for that pass. Absolutely no need. Joe, if you were coaching now, what would you do? If I were in that position, I would have substituted some offensive players, put a quick midi back there, the fastest deer I had on my team, and let him run that ball out instead of making the long pass to the defenseman. What do you do in terms of your timeouts that you have left? Right now, I would save them until I got myself in a situation where I feel the clock was down low enough that I'd have to tell them to go for one or two shots. Right now, they're down by two, so they've got to get aggressive. Under three minutes to go. Here comes Hobart. Another goal would just about clinch it now. The feed way out to the top of the box. Jeff Naus went right, left, had it stick checked away, but Hobart is uh, right in the thick of things looking to regain control. Fitzgerald, though, gets it to DeMeo. He's got to handle the ball. He's got to handle it. DeMeo can't control, and it's knocked down into the corner. Watch this. After it is Ketzner on Van Arsdale, and Van Arsdale successfully fights him off. Behind the back feed. Beautiful feed by Van Arsdale. The crowd loved it. A real crowd pleaser from the Rock of Gibraltar. Portland State throwing their weight around now, taking shots at anybody, especially the male of the ball, as we approach the two-minute mark. It's 10 to 8, Hobart leading Cortland State. Hobart has won 8 of 10 previous NCAA games, but Cortland State won the big one a few years ago, 12-11 over Hobart. Now it's just two minutes before Hobart can turn the tables. Scott Petosa taking his time. Fitzgerald plays him. 
Now, if they don't take the ball and go to the goal, they're going to get called for stalling. McAdam weaving his way through traffic and behind the net and coming back the other way. But it's knocked away by DeMeo. DeMeo uh, can't control with a big stick. And a whistle stops play. We have a push. So you're pushing, and it's going to be in favor of, of Cortland State. Now, this is the time I'd use one of my two timeouts. Call a timeout. I'd put, a, put in my offensive players. Instead of letting the defenseman behind the ball handle that, uh, behind the goal, handle that ball with his big stick, I would have to put in my fastest midfielder or attackman and let him clear that ball all the way up. Well, Joe, I still see three big sticks on the field for Cortland State. It really doesn't make any difference not have defense in there. You've got to have offense. There's one of the big men, and he loses the ball. Hobart State, Hobart State's been on their feet. The fans enjoying the final seconds. A minute 15 to play. Scott, Scott Petosa taking his time in the corner. We're number one champ goes up from the crowd. Now a minute five seconds to go. A flag, delayed call coming up. And another hat goes up. Multiple calls. Hobart taking their time. Petosa, the feed. And, and there's another, another penalty. Hat goes up. That's a situation where you hope the referee is wearing a toupee because that's the only thing he's got left to throw. Cortland State obviously in a desperation situation now. 54 seconds to go. All Hobart has to do is stand there and throw that ball around the goal and they're number one. Joe, I saw three calls made on that. That's right. First that the official threw his flag and then his hat. And then he raised his hand. Let's take a, take a look at it again. Again, Cortland State has no choice but to foul. There's one right there. Ball out in the midfield. He's going to try and, and maneuver. He's going to get a holding call there. And a third one pushed from behind. And that's when the referee ran out of laundry to throw on the field. Doesn't make any difference because after the first one minute play, the only hope that Cortland State has now is to go out, overplay him, and try and take the ball away and call a timeout. Once again, if you join us along the way, Cortland State scored the game's first two goals, but Hobart came back with the next four and they led four to two at the quarter. Portland scored the only three goals of the second quarter and led 5-4 at the half. Portland State is now down two men. If they get the ball, they ought to call a timeout. The alternative will probably be, if they get it, one of the players will throw it the length of the field and hope that one of their attackmen will be of help to them. In that regard, Cortland State should probably have one of their attackmen down near the goal mouth area, but they're not doing it. Here we go, 50 seconds to play. Hobart in the white uniforms leading by two goals at 10-8, and they have the ball in no hurry whatsoever. Number 11, Roy McAdam in close, Larry Grimaldi scores! Icing on the cake. That picture pretty much tells it all. Cortland State has nothing to be ashamed of. They have played one heck of a defensive game out here today. They really faced a tough goalie down at the other end of the field who was equal to the task. Let's take a look at it again. The extra man play, almost an inevitable goal, David. Cortland State down two men. Ball being whipped around. This man is going to come in here totally unmolested, just in the lower half of your screen. And there's the ball going right into the goal in the upper left-hand corner of the goalie's shoulder. Well, as you might expect, all the celebrating by Hobart has cost them uh, a delay of game penalty. And so, no face-off. Possession awarded to Cortland State. Half a minute to play. Coming right in and firing wide and missing is Cortland State and uh, they didn't even have a man backing up on the play and so Hobart gets the ball for what could be the final possession by either team. Their only prayer there for Cortland, excuse me David, was to put everybody on the crease and just try for a screen. That's why nobody was behind. Now they get it in play with 25 seconds to go on the clock. Portland State made a fine run at Hobart, but not enough. Jim Braun making another save, and he wings it upfield now with 10 seconds to go on the clock. Let's pick up the countdown by the Hobart fans. There it is. The NCAA Division III 
National Lacrosse Championship has gone to the Hobart Statesman before a capacity crowd here at Boswell Field in Geneva, New York. Hobart has defeated Portland State by the final score of 11 to 8. And so the national championship for the third time in the last 10 years has been won by the Statesmen of Hobart. And for the first time, they have won it at the expense of Cortland State.